In bourgeois terms, it was a war between the Allies and Germany. In Bolshevik terms, it was a war between the Allied and German upper classes. And which of them won was a matter of indifference. I was ordered by the party to enlist. I gave my name as Petra. They were shouting for victory all over Europe, praying for victory to the same God. My task, the party's task, was to organize defeat. From defeat would spring the revolution, and the revolution would be victory for us. The party looked to the conscript peasants, most of them wearing their first good pair of boots. When the boots wore out, they'd be ready to listen. When the time came, I was able to take three battalions with me out of the front line, the best day's work I ever did. But for the moment, there was nothing to be done. There were too many volunteers, like me. Mostly, it was mere hysteria. But there were men with better motives, men who saw the times were critical and wanted a man's part. Good men, wasted. Unhappy men, too. Unhappy in their jobs. Unhappy with their wives, doubting themselves. Happy men don't volunteer. They wait their turn and thank God if their age or work delays it. The ones who got back home at the price of an arm or an eye or a leg, these were the lucky ones. Even Comrade Lenin underestimated both the anguish of that 900-mile-long front and our cursed capacity for suffering. By the second winter of the war, the boats had worn out. But the line still held. Their greatcoats fell to pieces on their backs. Their rations were irregular. Half of them went into action without arms led by men they didn't trust. Come on, you bastards! And those they did trust? Come on, comrades. Come on. Come on! Come on! did what all the armies dreamed of doing. They began to go home. That was the beginning of the revolution.